a personal problem. Okay. okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. You want to count down and do your clap? <laughs> no, we don't have to. Okay. You just count down and then do the pause. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, action. Hey, and welcome to Bitcoin for Introverts. I'm hey. Samson Williams. Morning, Moran. Excellent. Hey there. Hi there. Actually, is this Bitcoin for Introverts or Karate Advisors? I don't, I'm not really sure. Well, I mean, Karate Advisors does Bitcoin for Introverts, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, the question we're going to answer today in this episode is real estate crowdfunding. Okay. What is it? Sort of how does it work? We're only going to spend about three minutes on it. So, we'll kick it over to the good doctor and professor, the myth, the lady herself <laughs> at Crowdy Advisors. What does real estate crowdfunding mean? Uh, so, just to separate the two, crowdfunding is the act of um, a large group of people and each putting in a relatively small amount of money to meet a pur- to fund a purpose, a goal, a project, etc. So if you add real estate to it, it's essentially people coming together, putting smaller amounts of money together to fund a either a development project or to purchase a, maybe a multifamily um, building or maybe to purchase a home, uh, or, you know, a single family home. Mm-hmm. So essentially people are coming together and this is all done via a platform. Where's um, the platform? It is a funding portal. So this is where people she means create. Online. Oh yes, it's online. So you create a profile and you look at the different uh, properties that you would want to invest in and then you invest. Or there are some people who want, um, who have the property in mind that they need investors for. So mm-hmm. then you could then turn around and create your own platform going through the uh, FINRA process and all that so that you could have these particular uh, projects or um, real estate development projects online. So let's do a thing, let's do a scenario. Let's say I have a multifamily unit. It's a quadplex, duplex, um, it's four apartment units, four apartment units. And so I need to raise uh, $2 million. How does that look, look like? Well, so you already have the property in mind. I have um, property in mind. So you could go through, it's like if you do it two ways, it depends on what kind of investors you're trying to engage. If you're trying to only engage accredited investors, then that's one route. But if we're saying we're trying to engage like the average retail investor, mm-hmm. then you could either list, depending on the, um, the funding portal, the platform online, you could either list that property. Um, and then create a campaign around getting that. Do I have to fund it property before I list it? Um, no. So there are some platforms that will say this is what we're looking at, mm-hmm. you know, and we can put a uh, put a an offer in and all that. Mm-hmm. Some like to already have the um, you know have some communication with the owner, or the developer, developer to try to move that across. Quickly, but you don't have to own the property before you try to raise money. You just money have for to it. have the intention of buying a specific property, right? And okay. I mean, you just but you have to tell your the people who are going in on this deal with you. You don't actually own it yet; that is not yours, and you can't guarantee the sale. Once you raise the money, there's no guarantee that you will close. Uh, so that's another thing. That's a good point. So we're going to have a campaign hypothetically to buy 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue for two million dollars. Whether or not that they actually want to sell us the building for that is a different question, right? That is a totally different question. <laughs> um, yeah. So any other things that the audience should know in general about uh, crowdfunding for real estate deals? So the other thing you want to think about is when these folks are, um, when you're bringing on investors, retail investors onto your project, what will they actually have an ownership interest in? Will they have an ownership interest in the company that will be going around potentially buying these different companies or different um, locations or real estate properties? Or will they have interest or ownership interest in the actual property that you are crowdfunding for? So that's something to take into consideration. Awesome, awesome. So we're going to summarize that real quickly from our notes. You can have accredited or retail investors in your deal, depending on your platform. Platform is code word for online. And actually, most of the real estate um, crowdfunding platforms do want the investors to be accredited. Yes, there are some minimums that we didn't talk about. Right. Because some of uh, many of the minimums for um, like on Fundrise, I think Fundrise is twenty five hundred bucks, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. I think mobile shares or mobile realty is like fifteen hundred bucks, so yeah. over a thousand, yeah. we'll say. So all of the platform fees are minimums, rather the fees vary, the minimum investment varies, 
And you can be either investing in the company that's gonna go buy these properties or the properties themselves. There are some other nuances. We just wanna give you a little paint, a little picture. We didn't get into talking about whether you're gonna do debt or equity. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, because that's another option, right? You could do debt and so the people who invested you would be paying them back with maybe their rents or after you sell the property or something like that. Remember debt, uh, crowdfunding is you're getting a loan. You need to pay your back your investors. Uh, equity crowdfunding, you're owning a a piece of that building or that company that's going to go out and buy a piece of the company that's going to go out and buy a property. So keep that in mind. There's some details. Of course, the devil's in the details. Right. We just wanted to give everybody a little bit of flavor of what it means when we talk about real estate and crowdfunding. Uh, you can crowdfund a single family house, let's say it's $300,000, or an entire apartment complex or building, which is $300 million. Really just depends on what your offering is and how many investors you think you can get in on your deal. Because remember, just because you put your deal up on a platform, sort of like selling a house, you gotta have an open house, gotta draw attention to it. Um, sort of like listing your house on Trulia, it may not move without your help or effort. Keep that in mind, because that's a different conversation about lowering your customer acquisition costs or your investor acquisition costs for your crowdfunding campaign. But that's it for the moment. Uh, thanks for following, thanks for listening. Uh, follow. Uh, Maureen at Crowdy Advisors. I'm at Axes and Eggs or Hustle Fun Baby. Anything you want to sign off on? Yes. Uh, our little sweet disclaimer that uh, none of this is investment, tax, or um, real estate advice. We still encourage you to um, just use whatever we've said today for informational purposes only. That's right, because I'm only a lawyer on Twitter, and she hasn't yet sent her a retainer, so she's not a lawyer. <laughs> Peace. All right. See ya.